Raindrop in the Drought, Godavari Dung. The story of Godavari Dung, created by Ritika Subramaniam and Maitri Dove. I was born in Gandora village, in Maradwada's Tuljapur Taluka. The year was 1977. My father, Biman Shakar Dang, worked as a school teacher in the village. We belonged to the marginalized Guru community. Baba was happy, but very worried. Back in the late 1960s, the Indian government had introduced new farming techniques to transform dry lands into lush rice and wheat fields. Up north, farmers in Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh were celebrating the success of the Green Revolution. But back home in Maradwada, we were still recuperating from the deadly 1972 drought. It was the worst drought that the people of Maradwada had experienced in nearly half a century. Several families went without food and water for days on end. Women quarreled for every last drop. From the treetops we would gaze out at the fields. It wasn't hard to tell which fields belonged to the upper caste families, based on the green cover below. In the drought-prone parts of Maradwada, the richer farmers grew loads of sugarcane, one of the greatest water guzzlers imaginable. Meanwhile, the poor farmers, often from marginalized caste groups, owned very small pieces of arid land. They suffered from repeated cycles of failed monsoons, failed crops, bad debt and desperation. They spent all their savings to sink new bore wells. Anita Kulkani lived next door. She belonged to the dominant Brahmin caste. Women of her community were not allowed to go out of the house for work, but she was different. She was a strong and independent woman. She drove a tractor, plowed the fields and did all the work on the farm. Kulkani Thai practiced organic farming. While most big farmers in the village grew only cash crops like sugarcane and soybean, which they sold for profit, she taught me how to grow lentils, millet and leafy greens. She never used harmful pesticides and chemical fertilizers. I spent hours with her on her farm learning every little technique of sowing, plowing and harvesting. She paid me five rupees a day and I learned how to grow food from scratch. It was so much fun. It was also a really tough job. Kulkani Tai and the other woman in my village worked very hard and kept long hours on the fields. Yet, they were never recognized as farmers. Only the men in the village could own farmland. They treated the women as laborers. In 2007, Maradwada was hit by another drought. There was little water for agriculture. The rich farmers began to sink even deeper bore wells in desperate attempts to grow cash crops. The poorer woman stared at another year of uncertainty, loss and hunger. Kulkani Tai's words rang in my ears. It was difficult for me to convince the women to try food crops. Their husbands refused to spare even half an acre of land for them. I knew only one person who would trust me without question. My dear friend Achana. Achana began to grow a mixed set of crops, including some millets, pulses and leafy greens on her land. They grew well with comparatively little water. As the word spread, more and more women came forward with their little pockets of land. From time to time, we invited scientists from Krishi Vigyan Kendra the government's farm science center in Osmanabad. They advised on scientific farming techniques to conserve water and improve the overall yield. The farmers began to introduce hydroponics, drip irrigation and sprinklers on their small patches of land. The drought was no longer a nightmare for these women farmers. The results of the lab to land model were in front of our eyes. After years of trial and error, we finally built a model that combined the local climate patterns with the women's own social pressures. The one-acre model supported 36 varieties of drought-resistant and short-term crops, such as leafy vegetables, grains and lentils, on half to one acre of land. Based on the season, we chose different varieties of seeds. Our goal was to ensure food for all, all year round. But it wasn't easy for all the women. Many still had to deal with the upper caste village headmen, unsupportive government authorities and abusive husbands. The one acre model was put to test in 2012. 
Maradwada experienced its worst drought in 40 years. There was not even a single drop of water to drink and farm. We had to rely on government tankers and private water sellers. Each day became a challenge. Amidst this scarcity, the farmers cultivating cash crops failed miserably. Without water, the cane began to wilt and die. Driven by debt, thousands of farmers died by suicide. Our women farmers, however, stayed afloat. To my joy, the women transformed into local leaders. They influenced many others to build their own one-acre models. Even the men realized the value of food crops during the drought years and began to support us. We linked the women to government schemes and subsidies, as well as the local markets. This gave them personal savings. And gradually, from six nervous farmers back in 2007, over 60,000 women farmers are currently practicing this grassroots model. As the model began to achieve local success, I got the opportunity to share our experiences with activists, NGO leaders and practitioners around the world. There has been also much to learn from the ways in which they are fighting climate change. In the past 10 years, I've traveled to 17 countries. Every time I'm airborne, I try to look for the fields of Gandora, now green, thanks to the strong fight put up by our women farmers. We have come a long way, but we still have many battles to win. The one acre model should reach every village. Women from every household should be recognized as producers and landowners. They should be everywhere. Together, nothing is impossible. My name is Godavari, and like the river, I will never cease to flow. Credits The Raindrop in the Drought, Godavari Dang. Comic of Ritika Rivati Supramanian and Maitri Dore was developed as part of Movements and Moments, Feminist Generations, an initiative of Goethe Institute. The project aims to make visible indigenous feminist activism and protagonists from the global south by relating their life stories in the highly accessible format of comics. The comic and video are published under the Creative Commons license.